Okay, so just scrying the Aether of Zen. And once again, as with the morning vision, I'm seeing um, just again this conical shape. This conical shape is turning into a torus, sort of moving in on itself, you know, in this circular way rotating it on itself and back out again. And I'm seeing uh, this time just a simple heart being placed right in the center of it. And once again, I'm just being reminded that this is the representative of the universe sort of coming in uh, on itself when you're talking about the Kabbalistic tree of life. So the four worlds and not strictly speaking the fifth world but God does sort of put in these um, swirling currents, as it were. It's, um, I'm going to try to use this hand to gesture more. Um, it's like he's, if, if you could imagine just sort of lightning popping into a bottle and then disappearing or popping in, doing its thing, causing its effect, and then, you know, disappearing again. God is sort of doing that to accelerate or decelerate things according to his timeline. Um, and so it's important for the heart to be at ease with this state of things. So this is kind of chaotic, right? So this is, um, the sense that I'm getting here is that this is a little bit of a, of a preview of previous of some of the higher aethers where I'm not, I haven't always really noticed this, what other magicians have called uh, chaos, K-A-O-S, which is similar to the Enochian words for chaosco, the earth, but this realm of chaos essentially is the implication. Um, at any rate, other magicians have noticed this and it's sort of like unto the, um, the sphere of chokmah, which means wisdom. Um, and so the sense that I'm getting is, is that this isn't, I mean, even though it might seem to us as we're working with it, that it's kind of chaotic, it's really just, um, God moving where he, he will. And so, um, having a discussion with someone the other day about, um, the nature of a compass is that it can get very kind of chaotic, but that's only if you're really trying to, um, at, at any rate, there's, there's a whole lot of things that it's, everything's trying to answer to at once. So at any rate, it's sort of like this adjustment is what I'm trying to say. So God will pop in lightning in a bottle, that sort of sense just comes into a bottle, leaves a bottle, but has this effect or like a virtual particle. It pops in, has this effect and then goes away again. And this is known and this has been observed, but what's interesting is, um, just reflecting on that for a bit is that you know the way that they are appearing it's sort of from us you know from this vantage point it appears like noise um but really it's there's a very much an intentionality to it and so god is literally um moving what's the word i'm looking for here God is literally moving the universe He's literally mu moving the universe from this realm so even though God is sort of dipped into this universe like there's there's a portion of his consciousness that is definitely bound and limited there's this extra set of rules that he is operating through the universe with. So there's this duality even within God of like the infinite, but the infinite by definition contains the finite. So if you imagine an infinite number line going like this, and then sort of, you know, there's, if I'm saying from negative a thousand to a positive a thousand, that's a finite range within an infinite number line that can go way past you know, a billion, a billion times a billion in one direction and then, or in the other, and still never, still be, you know, 
infinitesimal compared to the infinite. So, so the sense that I'm getting is, is that God is definitely sharing in our experiences and he is suffering along with us, but um, there's this outer range uh, of possibility that he definitely is also a part of and within. So looking at the supernals, right, there's this sense of an infinite possibility that needs to come into existence and then uh, infinite directions that could go that are, you know, very much that, that God could go, that the universe could go, that God is very much having his effect on. He's very much unified if you're looking at the crown and the tree of life uh, between those two principles. But outside of all of that, there's all of the different ways that anything could be ever or not be and still, you know. So at any rate, there's this very much a sense of God is like looking within this universe right now. And he is, um, he is seeing how, he's seeing the whole thing as it's playing out and he's experiencing it as well. And based on whatever is moving him, he is, you know, having these effects. And yeah, so he's taking certain consciousnesses through trying to have them develop certain things and certain things to be replicated for other, for some to see, but not most, um, and certain things for everybody to see, um, or available to see and understand and to work through. But there's a lot that God is working through too, and he's working through a lot within the confines, the limitations of this reality, which means that he's also experiencing those limitations here to a degree. Um, I mean, the lived experience of any one of us, he is going through that. So I'm trying to see what else they might have uh, to show me. And I'm just silently repeating the governor's names. and my holy guardian angel's name. And yeah, once again, I'm, I'm getting this big feeling up here. It's kind of like a, I mean, it's not painful, but it feels like a, a pole or a spike kind of going down into my central channel, into my heart. They're doing some work on my heart. They're bidding me to be still for a bit. And they're working through um, my throat chakra. I can't tell if they want to channel through me or not yet. It doesn't seem that way, but it does seem like they're trying to get me to soften my speech and to really reflect on my heart right now. And there's a lot going on. There's, um, there's a lot for my heart to work through. And just allow and open up. And it's like I'm feeling a lot of suffering of others, a lot of tears. And a lot of hopes. And and it's all going on and, and there are, you know, there's feeling of people being afraid and, and a, a strong eye out for, for joy. And so what I'm really getting is, is this sense that it would be much easier if we could all to, I mean, to, th this is the message that I'm getting. If we could all sort of remember that um, we're doing things for God and we're having these experiences for God. And that's so much easier said than done, right? Because we're the part of this whole, God is the whole. Yet at the same time, his suffering is multiplied, therefore. It's not just additive, it's multiplied. Um, 
but there are promises he's made to himself and to his creation just as we've made to ourselves and our creation. So, including being true to ourselves, most importantly of all. So this is a message that when is similar to what I got during Jebbafall, and that was kind of on the last day, and I'm getting it now much earlier. Okay, this is day, what, 13? So, but yeah, it's a lot of... Um, a lot of strong emotions, and I'm feeling these as pressures on my heart. Again, my heart feels like it's in a crucible, but now it's like it's things are softening up a lot more. And um, the sense I'm getting is, is that we're moving out of an albedo phase into close more and more of the rubedo phase. So the alchemical work is is going. So I'm just very grateful to all of the angels for this. And um, yeah, I'll probably wind up putting this up a little bit later, maybe tomorrow morning, uh, just after I get a chance to um, make some of the graphics needed for the um, audio versions of the first vision, I think it was, because um, there's stuff that I'm describing, but that won't make sense unless you can get a good visual. So anyway, I'll post the video of this tonight and uh, thus ends the vision.